So the last section we're going to look at this week is 3.3. And we're not really going to be doing anything new in terms of calculation. I'm just going to show you a different way to write something. All right. So when we write the equation of a line, okay, a linear function, can someone remind me what the formula is? What's the equation that we use for a y line? Y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. So um, let's write that in on our blank. Okay. Y equals mx plus b. So another notation that we can use instead of y equals mx plus b is called function notation. It's not doing anything different. It's just a different way of writing the exact same thing. Okay? Function notation is more common when you do stuff in like Algebra 2. When I teach pre-calculus, that's all that I use. I don't really use y equals. Okay? It's, it's, a little, it's a little different, but it means exactly the same thing. In this box right here, this is function notation. f of x equals mx plus b. So in that box, thank you. Um, in that box, you want to put f of x equals mx plus b. What's the only thing that changed from what I wrote on this line to what I wrote in this box? There's only one thing that changed. Yeah? Uh, so what, well, what did I get rid of? Yeah, all I did was change, change y to this. That's it. F of, and I'm going to explain how you pronounce that. But all we've done is we've changed the y to that symbol. That's it. Those two things that I just underlined are the exact same thing. So if you get a problem and you're confused because it has f of x, that's how you pronounce it. If you see f of x and you don't like it, you can go like this. And you can just say, all right, I'm going to pretend it's y because that's easier for me. That's it. That's the same. It's exactly the same thing. Then what's the point of it if it's the same thing? Because what we can do with that is, let's say I had different formulas. Like I had, I'm just going to write three of them. Or I'll just do two of them. And I said, I wanted to say, like, all right, look at the formula that y equals. Well, they're both y equals, right? So what I can do is instead of using y, I can give the top one a name. I can say, look at formula f, right? And now you'd say, oh, OK, he means the top one, because that one has an f. Or if I wanted to say, look at formula g, that's the bottom one. This can be any letter you want. A, B, C, D, E. All that the letter does is it basically gives your formula a name. Right? So now if I said look at formula G, which one am I talking about? The bottom, 8x minus 5. If I said look at formula F, which one am I talking about? The top one, 2x plus 3. Right? If I just put a Y for both of these and I said, oh, look at the one with Y. Or even worse, say maybe I had 10 of them on the board. And I said, look at the one with y. And they all, 10 of them, started with y. You wouldn't know which one I'm talking about. Okay. But if I use this, I can just use different letters so you know which formula I'm talking about. Okay, So that's called function notation. So f, this letter you put right here, it's a name. In math, names are just single letters. We don't use like Sarah or something. But f is the name of that function which can be any letter you want. Certain letters I might not use. Like, I probably wouldn't use the letter O, because that might look like the number zero. That would be weird. Um, or like an L, lowercase l could kind of look like a one. So any letters that don't look like numbers are OK. To or use. S. Yeah, S might look like a five. So what this means is F of, and then whatever is in the parentheses. That's how you pronounce it. It's the function of, and then usually there's something in here. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be an x. Why would it be x? Because you always put in the, um, 
the domain letter there. And domain is always X. So they always put in the letter for the domain there. That's why I didn't fill it in, because we've done some problems where the domain letter is an X. We've done some where it was, I think we did one with the, um, the money and the books you buy. So that was um, B. So if I put a B in there, that's fine. The way I would pronounce this is the function of B, F of B. That's how you would pronounce that. Right. If I put a, a D in there, I think we did D for DVDs the other day, you'd pronounce that F of D. That's how you pronounce it, F of D. Um, what if I had something like, like this? How would you pronounce that? G of X, right? G of X, that's it. So all that we did in this example right here is we changed Y to F of X. So you just have to write in the underlying part. But they mean exactly the same thing. So the X on the inside can change too? Well, if you're doing like DVDs or books, you might use a different letter for your domain. And the F can change too? Yep, the F is the name of the function. Yep, so the F can change. You could have, let's say you had something like that. How would you, how would you pronounce that one? Yeah. And you could do like H of B. Yep. Okay. So those letters can change. H is just the name of the function. You can name a function anything you want. You can name it F, you can name it G, you can name it H. I mean, you could do K, you could do Q, right? Does it, I don't care what you name your function, right? Name it whatever you want. Not, but most of the time, you're going to see the letter F, right? If I have to just pick a name for a function, and I don't have more than one function at a time, I'm always going to call it F. If I had to do a second one, I would probably pick G, just because that's the next letter after F, F, G. If I had another one, I'd pick H. Right? If I had a fourth one, I don't know what I'd pick. Right? But F is always the name that I use if I only need to talk about one function. All right, what does, uh, what does evaluate mean? Remember, we talked about that Isn't way like down. to solve? A um, little different than solve. Just solve is when usually you have something like this. Directions here could say solve. Simplify? No. But what does evaluate mean? It's kind of like when you have to check an answer. What do you, what do you have to do when you want to check an answer? Yeah. Plug it in. Plug it in, and then basically simplify from there. So evaluate means take a number, plug it into the variable, and tell me what you get. So like if I gave you this, right, and I said evaluate for x equals 2. That means take 2, plug it in for x, and tell me what you get. So like in this case, uh, what would you get if you plug in 2 for x? Yep, so you get 17. So evaluate just means plug a number in and then do out the arithmetic. So I'm going to add one thing to this. Plug in a number for the variable and simplify. Don't just stop with plugging the number in. Plug it in and then, and then do it out. Okay, so let's look at, at this one. It says evaluate the function f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 for three different numbers. Negative 3, 0, 2. This is how you write your three answers. This, remember how we pronounce this, f of, and then the number. The function of negative 3. The function of 0. Function of 2. All that this means to do is, when you plug negative 3 into the function, I want to know what you get. 
when you plug 0 into the function, I want to know what you get. Plug 2 into the function, I want to know what you get. Right. So let's start off to the side with f of negative 3. Okay. What's the first thing I have to do when, I, when they say evaluate? Plug in a number. What number am I plugging in the first time? Three. Yep, I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in negative three. So, negative four, stay right where it is. X becomes negative three plus seven. So this isn't anything new. You guys have done this before. It's just a different way of writing your answer. What's negative four? 4 times negative 3? Positive 12. positive 12. And what's positive 12 plus 7? 19. 19. And that's the answer you put on the first one. So again, what this means is if you plug negative 3 into the formula for f, you will get 19. Now I want to know if you plug 0 into the formula for f. We'll do that off to the side. So negative 4, and Lucas, what am I plugging in? 0. 0. What's negative 4 times 0? 0. 0. And what's 0 plus 7? Seven? 7. 7. So this says that if you plug 0 into the formula for f, you will get 7. We'll try one more. Let's do uh, f of 2. So this means the value of the function when you plug in 2 for x. Uh, so Julia, can you tell me um, what I'm going to write down to figure that out? Um, negative 4 times 2 plus 7. That's it. Negative 4 times 2 plus 7. Um, Joe, what's negative 4 times 2? Negative 8. <laughs> right. And negative 8 plus 7 is going to give me? Negative 1. Okay. Any question on that? Okay. So, yep. Yeah. So, another reason why you might want to give a function a name is, let's say I gave you this. f of x, okay, just, just watch this part. Okay, you don't have to write this part down f of x equals 2x plus 1, g of x equals, I don't know, 3x minus 5. And I said to you to do this. g of 2. So I want you to plug in 2. But not only what number do I want you to plug it in, where do I want you to plug it in? Which one? Where? Two uh, x. So, so it would be two times two. No. Do it on the one with the g. Why? Because the g. Because they're both g. And so yeah. Work with g and f. This is telling you where to plug it in. It's saying plug 2 in to the G formula. If I did something like this, this means plug 3 in to which formula? The F formula. Okay. So when you have multiple equations, you just have to pay attention to which one they want you to use. Okay? So they might, you might see something like that. You don't have to plug 2 into everything. Like let's say I even gave you another one k of x equals x minus 5. You don't have to plug 2 into all of them. You only have to plug it into the one they asked you to, g or f or k, you know, whatever, whatever one they ask you to. Okay, any, um, any question on that? OK, so I just want to make sure that was, that was clear. All right, so remember the steps when we are solving an equation. Thank you. 
you don't have to write the steps down because you already have them in your notes many, many, many times. If you don't know these steps, you've got some room on your guided notes, you might just want to make a little box in the lower right and, and write them. There's not very many, so you'd have enough room if you want to. But did anyone remember the three-letter word that we use to remember how to solve Sam. equations? Sam. S-A-M. So if you don't remember Sam, you might, you might want to put this down. Um, what's the S stand for? Yeah? Simplify. simplify. Two things you have to do under simplify. What's the um, first thing you have to do if it's in the problem? <coughs> it's a certain property. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we always do the distributive property. And then the next thing under simplify, I usually abbreviate it with three letters. CLT. Wait, I have a question. Are we supposed to be writing this? If you don't remember it, you can, but we've we've gone through it at least two or three times. So it's up to you if you wanna if you wanna write it. You need to know it for the test, but. We've already done. Um, so what's the simplify? What's the next one? CLT. Yeah? Terms. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Right? So combine like terms. Now, you might not have distributive property in every problem. First one we're going to do isn't going to have it. Okay, so you might not have it. Um, what's the A stand for? Addition and subtraction. Yep. Addition or subtraction. So if there's any adding or subtracting, we do that next. And what about the M? Multiplication. And that's always your last step, multiplication and division. Okay, so those are the basic steps for solving an equation. Remember, that's different than PEMDAS. PEMDAS is for arithmetic. SAM is for algebra, solving an equation. And I think that's all that was there. So again, if, if you need that, I think you probably got enough room in the lower right. You could just make a few quick notes. Um, don't fill up like the whole space on the bottom because you're going to need a little bit to do example two. All right, so let's look at this. So when we did example one, where did we plug in the number? Like they told us to plug something in three different times. We plugged it in for, for one letter. Yes. We plugged it in for the x. Every single problem, the number went right there. Okay. We always plugged it in for the x because it said x equals. Right? You plug it in wherever it tells you to. If it's x equals, plug it in for x. Now, let's look at this one. They're telling me that something equals. How would you read this? Wait, we're writing that, right? Oh, did you guys use the letter H? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we could just make that H and H. Then it doesn't matter what letter you use. But it says right here in this box, how do you say that? James? H times X equals 4. Um, careful, there's no times there. Parentheses don't mean times here. Yep? H of X. Right, it means H of X. All right, no, no multiplication. It just means H of X equals 4. So they're telling me to plug something in. They're telling me to plug in 4 for what? No, it doesn't say X equals 4. That's like what we did right here. X equals negative 3, X equals 0. Where do they want me to put that for? They don't want me to put it for X. Yeah? Isn't that to answer the equation that they're trying to get you to solve to that answer? Yeah, so where, yeah, where would the 4 go? The H of X. They want this number right here. They want me to replace everything that's circled. That's you with a 4. Okay. Any question why I'm not plugging it in for the x this time? <coughs> if it said x equals, I would put it in for the x. But it doesn't. It says h of x equals. 
So put it where the h of x is. All right. Um, so how about, uh, Tristan, when I do that, what's my equation going to look like? 4 equals 2x plus 2. Yeah, exactly. Now, solve the equation. Find x. Okay, that's what you're finding. So now we just have to remember the steps. Um, how about, um, Sophia, do I have any um, distributive property here? Maybe. What do we look for with distributive property? Parentheses. You're always going to have parentheses when you have distributive. Do we have parentheses? <coughs> we do? Where are they? Um, so I'm looking right oh, at that. I was looking at the H thing up there. Okay. There's no parentheses. Nope, no parentheses. So we don't have any distributive property. Uh, Maya, do you have any like terms? So remember, combined like terms has to be on the same side of the equal sign. Oh, no. No. Like terms would be something like 4 equals 2x plus 3 minus 5x. Now you could combine 2x and negative 5x. We don't, we don't have that. <coughs> um, how about um, Jaden? So I don't have any simplified. Any adding or subtracting? Um, no. Yeah, no. No? Yes? You're not sure? No to yes to not sure. Anyone think they can help him out? Remember, you're trying to get x by itself. So, Olivia? You need to subtract the 2 from both sides. Yeah. You need to subtract 2 from both sides. So that gives me that. So yes, we did have some addition or subtraction. In this case, just subtraction. Um, we're done with that. Any multiplication or division? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What do I have to do? Divide by two. Divide by two. What's two divided by two? One. And that's the answer. All right. So example one was evaluate. They give you a number for x. You plug it in and you do arithmetic. Example two, they give you a number to put on the other side. And you're not doing arithmetic. You're doing algebra to get the letter by itself. So two different kinds of things. Now, this thing that I've circled is really just what letter? Remember, it's replacing what letter? Y. Right, normally we would have this problem, like if I showed it to you yesterday, you would have seen it like this. That is the same problem, okay? Remember that. This part on the left just means y. Okay, that's all that it means. It just means y. So there's no difference. So if it even confuses you, you can even cross it out after and just make it y. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's look at example three. So last thing we're going to look at is um, a couple graphs. So on the back of, um, yeah, right on the back of your guided notes, at the top. I'm going to give you guys a problem like that. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not going to do this yet, so don't worry yet. I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to want you to make a picture of it. The way we're going to do it is we're going to make a table, just like we did yesterday. So the difference with this section is you can pick anything you want for x. I'm not telling you, like, you can buy one book, two books, three books, four books, five books, something like that. I'm going to let you pick whatever you want. Now, if you can pick anything you want for x, what kind of values do you think you should pick? Okay, why, why not 1,000 through 1,010? Why? Because crazy Why? What makes them crazy? using like five is a lot simpler. Yeah, smaller numbers are easier, right? So you, when we graph our pictures, they're all going to look like this. They're going to be lines. They're going to go on forever. So you can pick anything you want. 
My advice would be to pick small numbers. I also wouldn't pick what other kind of numbers would I avoid? Yeah, I would avoid fractions. You can, you can do fractions, but it's gonna make the arithmetic for you harder. So my suggestion, when you're picking values you wanna use for x, you always want a few negatives and a few positives. I would pick these values right here. I would plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If you don't wanna do that, fine. Pick 57, 98, 106, 105, I don't care. But the arithmetic's gonna be a lot harder because you picked bigger numbers. So I, I would stick with those. So let's look at our, at our table. This is pretty much the same table we did yesterday. The first column is x. And in your table, this column is going to look the same for everybody, unless you choose to use numbers that I didn't suggest. You can, but these are going to be the easiest. So pick these five. The next column is your formula. So now you put in your formula like f of x equals 2x plus 6. This is the formula where you plug the column where you plug stuff in. The third column is really like what letter? Yeah. That's your y column. Right? We're just not calling it y anymore. We're calling it f of x. And then your fourth column is your coordinate, just like we did yesterday. x comma y. Right? So remember, this is really just a y. That's just a y. Thanks. Any questions on, on that part? Right. So now, once you have these values, right, you, you said, okay, I'm going to pick the values he told me to pick. I'm going to put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You have to do what we did in example 1. You have to plug in each one of these numbers, one at a time, into the formula that they give you. What's the formula? Well, I don't know. Every, every problem is a little different. And the problem we're going to do, that's going to be the formula. So we're going to, we're going to do that one. So plug in each x value, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, into the formula to find the y value, to find f of x. So you're going to plug in a value for x, we get the answer for y. Now, one thing I want you to remember in this section, everything is connected. All right? The only time you might get dots is when you have a word problem. We're not, we're not going to look at, um, I don't think we're going to do a graph with dots in this section. We did some of those yesterday. So the last step is graph all the points in your table. You should have all your coordinates right there. And then draw your line. And again, connect it. Only time it might not be connected is if you do a word problem with something that's discrete. Right? But we, we talked about that stuff yesterday. Right, so any... Uh, Questions before we finish up and look at the uh, last two. All right, so I'll try, let's see, can I keep this up at the same time? Yes. All right, so example three, they want us to draw or graph that function. f of x equals negative one-half x plus five. Now, I don't like that that negative one half is in there, but I can't change the problem. Right? The negative one half is it's the way it is. So we, we, we got to deal with it. Who can tell me the five values I should pick for x? Yep. Two. Um, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Yep. I would pick negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. If you don't want to go with those, fine. Pick, pick your own. But I would go with those. Now, plug in each value that Leilani just said 
into the formula. Um, Blake, what's my, what is my formula? F of x equals negative 1, x plus 5. Negative? 1 half x. Got it. Plus 5. Okay, so the first column, I don't really need a calculator yet. I'm just going to plug everything in. So let's write it out. Negative 1 half times, and now fill in your first x value. Negative 1 half times, um, James, what's my next x value? Um, not yet. We've got to do one before that. Negative one. Yep. Negative one. Um, how about Elizabeth? What is my next x value? Zero. Yep. Now we're going to do zero. Uh, Olivia, my next x value? One. One. And my last one, Tristan? Two. Perfect. Okay. So now we, um, now we need a calculator. All right, so negative a half times negative two. Uh, does anyone know what that is? Negative a half times negative two. Jane? Uh, it is one. If you need your calculator, you can type it in. One plus five gives me six. All right. What's negative a half times negative one? James? One half. One half. What's five plus one half? Five and a half. Again, yeah, no problem at all if you want to use your calculator on this. What's negative a half times zero? Yep, Joe. Zero. Zero plus five. five. There we go. Negative a half times one. Jade? Negative. negative one half. What's negative <laughs> one half plus five? It's like five minus a half. Yep. Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. Notice how you're seeing a pattern here? You should be, because this is linear. Right? The x's are going up by 1. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. The y's are going down by a half. Minus a half, minus a half, minus a half, minus a half. Right? So if you see a pattern, that's good. That means you did it right. It's linear. You should always have a pattern from what we learned uh, yesterday. Okay, so now let's just write out our coordinates. Um, yeah? What's that? Do you have to write f of x? No, now we're going to put numbers here. Yeah, but like when you do it, you have to write f and then the number? Um, oh, over here on this second column? No, on the last column. Last column? Let me show you exactly what you're going to write. I'll show you right now. Um, anyone tell me what's the first number going to be? Negative 2. Yep, and then the second number? Six. Six, that's what you have to write. Negative two comma six. Um, how about uh, Kayla, what's my next one? Um, negative one, five point five. Perfect, negative one, five point five. Um, Mackenzie, what's my third one? Um, it's zero, five. Yep, zero, five. Um, Princess, my fourth one? Yep. 4.5. And my last one, how about um, Gianna? What's my last one? 2 and 4. Perfect. Now, graph those points. And hopefully they line up nice and straight. Okay, I can kind of tell from the table they already do because I see a pattern in the x's and the f of x's for the y's. Okay. Um, do you think we have enough room to go by once? We don't have any numbers that are like 50, 60, something like that. So negative 2, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 1, 5 and a half. 0, 5. Um, 1, 4 and a half. It's looking pretty good. And then 2, 4. 2, 4. Now, what is this graph supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like a line. Lines go on forever. So make sure when you sketch it, draw your line. Like one thing you guys can do, like on a test, if you want to draw something straight, you can use your ID. Um, that would probably be the easiest thing you have that's nice and straight. 
Okay, I'm going to um, just kind of estimate and then move it. Well, I'll move the graph, try to move my line. Uh, I'm a little bit off, but that's okay. It's, it's close. Okay, so some people sketch that. They just connect the five little dots and then they stop. Just draw a line that goes on forever. Just like that. Perfect. So any uh, questions on that one before we look at uh, the last one? Okay, I think that's the last, that's the last graph for the lesson. Yeah, it's the last graph. All right, so example four says the function c of x, okay? Why did they use c? Anyone have a guess why they use c? Cost, right? The cost of x. We just have to figure out what x is. We'll keep reading. <coughs> so c of x equals 17.5 minus 10. Cost in dollars of buying x tickets. Little review, what is x again? It's my, what's another name for it? Independent variable, good. It's also my domain, good. So x is the domain. They don't necessarily ask that in this problem, but on the test I am going to ask you which one is the domain, which one's the range. Um, so x tickets and the other one is cost. What's cost? If, if x is, if uh, tickets is domain, Domain. Cost is range. range. That's your range. Hey, okay. what is the total cost when you buy five tickets? So, they're telling me to plug in a number five. Where are they telling me to plug it in? They're telling me to plug it in for X. How do I know that? X is tickets. Five tickets. Okay, so here, plug in five for x. You wouldn't have to write that on the test. I'm just writing down what I'm going to do. Okay, plug in five for x. Okay. All right, who can tell me um, what I do now? Um, we don't have to make a table because we're not drawing it. The table is only when you want to make a picture. So this, you just have to do one thing. Well, you've got to write an equation first. Yeah. Can you give me the equation that I'm going to solve? Uh, can you say the right hand side one more time? Okay. And now, is there anything I want to do there? Yeah, let's plug in 5 for x. Now, if you did that right away, that's fine. I would probably just, you don't have to rewrite it. If you want to, you can. But I would just fill in the x for 5 because that's what they told me to do. Times 5 minus 10. So the cost as a function of x, cost of x tickets. Uh, let's figure it out. 17.5 times 5 minus 10. Right. So you know what I could actually do too? If I'm going to fill in 5 for x, I might as well fill it in everywhere. So the cost of 5 tickets equals, what did I just get? 70. $77. And how would you write this if it was money? Yeah, put a zero at the end because when you write money, we always use two. So that's $77.50. I mean, it'd be kind of weird. Imagine you went to the store and you saw a price of 12.5. That'd be weird, right? It would say 
What if it was twelve dollars and five cents? Twelve dollars and five cents, then it would have come up like that on the calculator. Oh. Yep. So seventy-seven point five is seventy-seven dollars and fifty cents. So if you bought want to buy five tickets, that's how much money you need to do it. Okay. Any question on on that? Okay. So now the last thing it says, how many tickets can you buy if you have one hundred thirty dollars? Different, a little different. This is kind of like example one, and this is like example two from the notes. Where am I plugging in one hundred and thirty for the number of tickets? What do we think? Is that one hundred and thirty the number of tickets? No, that's not. What's the 130? Cost. That's cost. Cost is right there. This time they want you to plug in 130 for the cost, not the number of tickets. So anyone think they can tell me what that equation will be if I fill in what they're telling me to for the cost? Uh, Lucas, do you think you know what it would be? 130? Yeah, we want to fill in 130 for the cost. What do I estimate it? No, we need the formula from up. Did you get write down the formula? Yeah. It might already actually be printed on your guys' notes too. Let me see. Oh, it's goes on. Root cx equals 77.50, and then you want to get the y. It's called just y. I have no idea. Make sure you jump. Would be, uh, so it would be 130 and then the parentheses. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be 130 equals 77. Equals. Yep. Equals. I think we get stuck. <coughs> Anyone help out Joe? We're off to a good good start. We just have to finish finish that right hand side. Kelsey? 17.5x. Yeah. Minus 10. Right. You're taking, you're taking the formula that they gave you and you're filling in 130 for the cost. The last time we filled in for tickets. They can tell you to do either one. I can either say, all right, tell me how much the cost would be if you fill in for tickets, or I can say, I have $300, tell me how many tickets I can buy. Right? So you're always filling in a number, either on the left or on the right. right. Um, how about, um, Blake, what would be my first step to solve for x? Um, add 10 to 130. Yep, we're gonna add 10 on both sides, because remember, the question is, how many tickets can you afford? We're going to solve for that x right now. 140 equals 17.5x. And my, what would my last step be to get x by itself? You need to divide. Yep. What would you divide by? 17.5. 17.5. Now, I don't know what's going to happen when I type that in, but... Can, I, can your ticket be a decimal? No. no. So if you could afford like two and a half tickets, well, you don't have enough money for three tickets then. You can't buy two and a half. If you have enough money for two and a half, you can only afford two. So let's, let's divide it and see what happens. Maybe we won't even get a decimal. 140 divided by 17.5. Okay, so no, we didn't. You have enough money for exactly eight tickets. And make sure you put that label. Tickets. Okay. So any uh, any question on that one? All right. So homework um, tonight is going to be the reference sheet on three one to three three. Okay. It is not on Google Classroom because. If it was, I'd have you guys print it right now. But the printer's not working and they haven't fixed it. So, how do we. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the reference sheet. Okay, I will give that to you. Remember, I will be after school today. If you need extra help, you can come see me. If you have anything you have to finish from last week, uh, tomorrow is it. Okay, I'll be posting your report card grade tomorrow. Is it the reference sheet on the back of this? Um, no, that's extra practice. We're not going to do the extra practice. 